Okay, sit yourself onto your left. Just come into a good cross-legged position. Sit yourself on a cushion or on some blocks and come into a comfortable cross legs. So just have a little wriggle about and just make sure that you feel evenly positioned. Hold onto your knees and lift up into the chest. So we're lucky to be experiencing warm weather at the moment. So just observe how that changes the way that you hold your body. Maybe your body is more susceptible to accommodating the breath. I don't think susceptible is the right word. It's more welcoming and accommodating to the breath. Listen to the sound of the breath as it enters and as it exits. Just look down at the floor, look at something that's not moving. So I was telling one of my students this week, um, what I teach music to, that it's really warm in UK at the moment and she's in Dubai and said oh it's about 22 degrees today she was like oh my god I dream of 22 degrees because it's 50 degrees in Dubai so 22 degrees it feels really warm to us it that feels really quite chilly for them so it's all relative isn't it but 20 early 20s really nice weather for the UK isn't it so our bodies feel different. Maybe we sleep slightly differently because we're not used to it. But just allow your body to expand with the breath. Keep your eyes just still on the floor ahead of you. And just focus on Allowing the body to accommodate the breath. Bring your hands into Namaste. Lengthen from your armpits into your elbows, from your elbows into the heels of your hands, from the heels of the hands into the fingertips. And then with an exhalation, Allow your eyes to gently close. Just focusing on long, slow, deep, deliberate inhalations, long, slow, deep, deliberate exhalations. And then draw your chin down to meet your chest. Just spend a moment to seek to 
generate a genuine heartfelt sense of gratitude for something or someone or somewhere. Hold on to that feeling of abundance in the heart area. As you release the Backs of the hands down toward your knees, palms facing upwards, just connecting the tip of the index finger with the tip of the thumb. Just a gesture of peacefulness, of ahimsa, non-violence, and wisdom that we can carry into our practice. And then gently raise your head. Allow your eyes to softly open and the focus to softly come back. Hold on to your knees, lift up into your chest, broadening the chest with the in breath. Feeling that you can expand the collarbone, that you can expand the rib cage, feeling the intercostal muscles between the ribs expand with the inhalation. Feeling the relaxation of the chest with the out breath. Hold on to your knees, lift up into the chest, take a deep inhalation and then with an exhalation turn to the right side, drawing your abdomen across and your ribs and your shoulders just acknowledging how your back is feeling this morning, how the legs and the arms, the neck and the face and the head are feeling. Just bringing your attention into the physical sensations of the pose. Observing how the skin makes contact with the air. The air makes contact with the skin. Or in your abdomen to the right side, the ribs, the shoulders. Come back to the centre, hold on to your knees. Lift up into the chest and then turn to the left, draw in your abdominal region, cross the ribs and the shoulders, Using your out breath to gently intensify the turn. And then come back to the centre. Just come off your lift and then come down onto your knees. Have your hands as wide apart as your mat. Turn your toes under and then come up into dog down. So starting off with bent knees, so bend your knees acutely 
and then elevate the tailbone and the seat bones higher towards the ceiling so that you draw the shoulder blade region inwards and then let the head hang down a little and then tighten the kneecaps as you straighten your legs just breathing in through the nose and out through the nose making maximum contact between the palms and the fingers with the mat as you can turn in the fronts of the thighs inwards the fronts of the shins inwards so that the heels start to separate so that you can pick up the seat bones a little more Holding you too long in the pose, then just rest down in Adamuka Virasana. But if you can stay and maintain, then do. And then come down onto your knees, sit back on your heels, and just observe how that single Adamuka Svanasana has brought energy into the body. There's going to be lightness where before there was heaviness. Let's keep the seat bones down on the heels, come forwards, stretching forwards into Adamuka Virasana, stretching the side ribs into the armpit chest into the arms, into the palms, keeping the tailbone turning inwards, drawing down towards the floor. So activate your arms deeply. But stretch your arms, not just from the shoulders, but stretch your arms from the seat bones, lengthen the seat bones down and then lengthen from the seat bones into the armpits into the elbows, the wrists, the palms, into the fingertips. Extending the arms, keeping the forearms off the floor by drawing the elbows in towards each other so the arms become straight. And then bring your hands underneath your shoulders, push yourself up, just sitting back on your heels again. Just feeling how, again, perhaps you've just opened up the energy of the chest and the shoulders. Maybe incorporating lightness into the abdominal region. And then walk your hands behind you so that they, the hands come directly underneath the shoulders. If you've got a bad back, you might just want to stay at this stage. Pressing the hands into the floor, lifting from the wrists and up into the armpits. If there's no restriction on your back, then turn the tailbone inwards towards the backs of the knees. And up to the ceiling and then lift the seat bones up off the floor and then as long as there's no problem with your neck lengthen the chin away from the chest reaching from the wrists up into the armpits pushing the shins into the floor turning the tailbone in and up towards the ceiling lengthening the abdomen to the diaphragm to the collarbone to the chin wrists into the armpits and then come back down onto the seat bones. Sit back on your heels for a moment. Again, just observing the energy that you have released into the arms, into the chest, into the legs. And then come onto all fours. This time have your hands shoulder width apart, turn your toes under. And then come back up into dog down. So yesterday, I was talking about the familiarity of the pose. 
So how, when we're doing familiar poses, sometimes we observe more, sometimes we observe less. So in these familiar poses, can you observe the sensation of the pose from the inside? Feeling that you're lifting from the inside, that both sides of the body, the left side and the right side, are working evenly. That there is balance in action. So continually observe and activate. Because through that sequence of continual observation, do we find internal balance? Do we find internal sensitivity? Let's come back down onto your knees, sit back on your heels again. Just observing your energy. Just observing how you're just lifting your energy, but with really familiar poses. We do these poses every day, apart from the Pariyankasana variation. But just through these simple, minimal sequences, sometimes we can find deep energy because of that familiarity. Just sit back on your heels, stretch forwards, come back into Adamukha Varasana. So how does the pose feel now we're returning to it? Draw the tailbone down towards the heels. Allow the breath, the body to accommodate the breath. Extend from the armpits into the elbows, into the wrists, into the palms, into the finger knuckles, into the fingers, into the fingertips, into the finger nails. So this pose of Adamukha Virasana should never feel like you're just collapsing into the floor. It should never feel like you're collapsing into your hands. It should be a two-way stretch from the seat bones into the hands, from the hands into the seat bones. So lift your head and then come up onto the fingertips, staying down on the seat bones if you can, and then walk your hands over to the right side, trying to keep the seat bones down, but they will lift. But stay on the fingertips, lengthen deeply, especially into that left side, feeling that left side open up as you extend away. So we're going over to the right side, and lengthening into the left arm especially, but keep also lengthening into, into the right arm. The left side will feel more intense. And then walk your hands back to the centre beyond fingertips, just lifting the chest, and then walk your hands over to the left. This time stretching that right side, trying to keep the right seat bone down into the floor, lifting up into the chest. Breathing, even and deep inhalations and exhalations, feeling that stretch into the left side. And then come back to the centre, press the palms into the floor, sit back down onto the heels and then again lengthen your arms away. Each time we return to the pose, just see if there is something new that you can access. A new area of the shoulder blades or of the back of the arms, of the legs. Find new discoveries of access. And then bring your hands underneath your shoulders. Just sit yourself up 
observe your energy. Observe the lightness of your energy. The lightness of the arms. The lightness of the legs lifting the heart area upwards, drawing your shoulders down. Gathering your shoulder blades together a little more so that you can really open up the chest. Stretch your arms behind you. Spread the fingers, spread the palms. Lift the heart area upwards. Lift the arms as high as they'll go. Lift up into the chest. Drawing the belly button towards the spine, the lower ribs towards the spine. Lift in the sternum bone to the ceiling. Squeezing an imaginary box of air behind you. And then release, stretch your arms out in front, interlock the fingers, turn the palms all the way out and then raise your arms over your head. Pressing the shins into the floor, lifting the seat bones into the armpits, into the elbows, the wrists, the palms. And then release. Just swap the interlock of the fingers. Turn the palms all the way out. And then raise your arms up. Squeeze in the outer elbows inwards. Just listening to the breath. release your arms just rest your arms on the thighs palms facing upwards just feel the energy in the shoulders in the hips in the legs and then come back up into dog down have your hands shoulder width apart your feet hip width apart just observing how the body feels through the pose. Again, just seek out areas of the body that maybe are silent and that you haven't perhaps accessed in the same way. Can you access parts of the body that you discovered in Adamuka Virasana? Are you breathing intently into the into the lungs? Turn your left toes in slightly, and then if you can, step your foot between the two hands. Step the right foot between the two hands. And then bring your right hand onto your hip, onto your shin, sorry. Bring your left hand onto your hip and then turn the chest. Coming up into Trikonasana. So be in your Trikonasana. Just observing the alignment of the pose. Again, this is one of the most recognisable, familiar poses that we have. So we came into it in an unfamiliar way, perhaps. But can you find the trikonasana inside the pose? Can you activate that back leg? Can you activate both arms evenly? You lift from the feet into the hips, from the hips into the spine, from the heart area into the arms. Drop the top hand down onto the floor on the big toe side of the foot. 
the other hand onto the little toe side of the foot and then step yourself back into dog down. So your dog down will feel a little uneven. So aim to work on the inside to activate evenness. With a combination of effort and breath. Effort and breath and understanding of the pose. Whatever your understanding of the pose is, bring that to it. Again, we're just working with familiarity. Turn the right toes in. Step forwards with the left leg. Bring that left leg between the two hands if you can. And then bring your left hand onto your shin. Bring the right hand onto your hip and turn and open the chest. And then reach up. Again, just finding that familiarity from coming into the pose in an unfamiliar way. Find that evenness of action. Activating the feet on the floor, lifting from the feet into the hips, into the spine, from the heart area into the arms. Turning the chest to the ceiling. And then gently bring that top arm down onto the big toe side, bring the other finger, the other hand onto the little toe side, and then step yourself back into Adamukha Svanasana. Maybe your pose feels more even, more activated, more even on both sides. Maybe it doesn't, so just observe the pose and then aim to make the less willing side of the body Activate in mirror image with the more enthusiastic side. Just finding that internal balance. Sometimes the answer isn't simple. Just seek it out. sit back on your heels, just observe the intense energy you have released through your practice so far. That lightness in the arms and in the chest and in the neck and in the head and in the legs. through the nose and out through the nose, listening to the breath. And then just come off your seat bones and come onto your back in Sokta Badakanasana. So the soles of the feet are together, the knees are apart, and then just lengthen yourself along the floor. So through familiarity, through working with poses that we have done many, many times. We find unfamiliarity in the sequence. And so just observe how that unfamiliarity 
makes you feel. We've usually got a very specific sequence, haven't we? Limbering poses, standing poses, forward bends, twists, inversions, or reclining poses. In a way, we have addressed those sequences, that sequence, but in an unfamiliar way. So just observe how that makes the body feel. Observe how that makes the mind feel. Does the mind feel a little wrong-footed? But don't follow the mind too much. Allow the mind to follow the body. Just draw your focus into the sensations of the pose. And maybe you feel that you've really lifted the energy of the body. Maybe the limbs feel alive with energy. Hit the feet firmly together to create compactness in the hips and activity in the legs. Raise your arms up to the ceiling, spread the fingers, spread the palms. Keep the palms spread and then hook the thumbs together like you're making a, like a silhouette butterfly. Pull the hands apart, keep the thumbs together and then lengthen your arms along the floor. Just again, observing how coming into the pose in a slightly different way, using the arms in a slightly different way, affects the pose, affects your experience of the pose. Spread the palms like you're doing jazz hands, but keep the thumbs connected, spreading the palms, trying to tear the thumbs apart, but keep them well interlocked. Draw the abdomen to the spine. Keep the feet pressing together. And then raise your arms. And then swap the ho the hooking of the thumbs. So you did the, the you hooked the thumbs together one way, hook them the opposite way. Then stamp the feet together, lengthen the arms away, keeping the arms really active as you bring them all the way down to the floor. Breathing even deep. Inhalations and exhalations, listening to the breath. And then release your arms. Just bring your hands onto your lower ribs. Just feel how you have opened up the muscles of the side ribs and of the arms through stretching in a different way. Just listen to the breath. Just observe the lightness of your energy. It's uncomfortable in your hips, you can put blocks underneath your thighs, but if you can stay and maintain them, do just observe how the feeling of the body changes as you remain in the pose. Sometimes it changes in positive ways, sometimes in more challenging ways. So if it if it um, affects your body in a challenging way. Observe how you can adjust the pose to counteract that challenging action. Often it's a simple, tiny movement that 
changes everything. So just be inside the pose. Be inside the physical sensations of the pose, not just engaging with the areas that clamour for attention, but the areas that don't. And then gently bring your knees together. Have your knees together and your feet apart. So we were in top to Badakasta for quite a while there. So perhaps that felt strong on the hips. So just with the feet apart and the knees together, we allow the hips to recover a little. Draw your feet towards the seat bones, as close to the seat bones as you can get them. The Supta Kapitasana, the reclining pigeon. Keep the left foot where it is. Just bring your hands in front of the right knee, drawing the right knee in towards the chest. So you're squeezing the front of the hip. Keep the tailbone down as you pull the knee towards the chest just breathing even deep inhalations and exhalations squeeze in the front of the hip and then gently release bring that right foot back down onto the floor and then bring the right the left knee in towards the chest squeezing the front of the hip Bring in the knee into the chest, flexing the heel of that left leg. Just breathing in through the nose and out through the nose. Feeling the familiarity from the unfamiliarity. Keeping the tailbone down on the floor. And then bring the feet close to the seat bones and come down on to bring the feet close to the seat bones and then just shuffle into the feet with the seat bones. Bring the right knee in towards the chest, swap, bring the right foot across the top of the left thigh and hold onto that right foot with your left hand and then lengthen that right knee away from the body so that you open up the part of the hip that you previously were kind of squeezing so you're opening up on the inner groin a little and then gently release and then pull the right knee into the left knee in towards the chest grip around the back of the left knee with the hands Flex that left knee and bring left, left that flex the left heel even. Bring the left knee in towards the chest, keeping the tailbone down on the floor, drawing the knee in towards the chest to stretch out the glutes and the sciatic nerves of the right leg, keeping that tailbone down on the floor. And then release the leg, bring the left foot close to the seat bone, unhook the right leg, just come back down onto the floor. Draw your left knee in towards the chest, cross the left foot across the top of the right thigh, hold onto that left foot with your right hand and then lengthen that left knee away from the body. remaining observant of the feeling of the physical body with each pose how it changes the physical body and then release
release that left knee. Keep the right left foot over the top of the right thigh. Hook the hands underneath the back of the right knee, flexing that right heel away, keeping the tailbone down, and then pulling that right knee in towards the chest, keeping the tailbone down on the floor. So just lengthening out glutes on the right on the left side, stretching out the right side of the leg. Okay, and then gently release that leg. Just release both legs bring the feet close to the seat bones again and just rest down into the floor again bring the knees together the feet apart just to rest out the hips just observing your breath so through familiarity maybe we find deep energy in the physical body bring the feet together have the feet clamped together have the knees clamped together and bring your arms out in line with your shoulders palms facing upwards the jatara paravatanasana so you're going to keep your knees clamped together you're going to keep your feet clamped together and then you're going to roll the knees over to the right side keeping the right side of the foot, the outside edge of the foot down on the floor bringing those knees over to the right side, but then drawing your abdomen from the right to the left, keeping that left shoulder firmly down, looking over that left shoulder if you can. Bring the knees over to the side. We're not necessarily bringing them to the floor. Keep the knees clamped together, the feet clamped together, the abdomen rotating in the opposite direction to the knees. And then come back to the centre. Just reset the feet in the centre. Keep your arms outstretched. Clamp the knees together and then roll the knees over to the left side. Drawing the abdomen from the left to the right. Keeping that right shoulder down. Looking over that right shoulder. So that tension between the knee direction and the abdominal direction is what gives this pose its effective action. Keeping the knees together, keeping the feet together. Keeping the breath deep and even. And then gently Come back to the centre and then bring the feet into Baddha and then let the knees fall apart. Keep the feet together firmly, rest your hands on your lower ribs. Stretch your arms to the ceiling, this time interlock the fingers in a more familiar fashion. Turn the palms all the way out. And then lengthen your arms along the floor. Stamping the heels together to create that action in the legs so that you can turn the tailbone in, draw the abdomen towards the spine, broaden the abdomen into the abdominal walls. Lengthen from the hips into the armpits, from the armpits into the elbows, into the wrists, into the palms. So what could be just a completely passive pose, we can bring energy and life into. Raise your arms, swap the interlock of your fingers, turn the palms all the way out, again lengthening the arms along the floor. 
Sometimes Sapta Badakanasana is a good alternative to an inversion. But as long as you activate the pose, as long as it becomes energetically driven rather than just passive. So lengthen from the feet into the hips, from the hips up into the spine from the hips into the armpits, from the armpits into the elbows, into the wrists, into the palms of the hands. So you bring the body to life. There's no area left behind. And then Release your arms, just rest your hands on your lower ribs. And then draw your knees together, your feet apart a moment just to rest out the hips. And then come up onto your elbows. Just stretch yourself along your mat in a really good straight line. Guide yourself down onto the floor. Find your blanket, have the blanket from underneath your head, make sure it's evenly folded, and then let the feet fall apart. Let the arms relax. Unhook the muscles of the arms and the legs, and allow the body to become heavy on the floor. Out of that heaviness comes a, an intense lightness that radiates out from the bones and into the muscles and into the organs. Into the flesh and the skin. Soften the jaw and the tongue and the throat. And use your in-breath and your out-breath to distribute that feeling of energetic lightness down into the toes, into the fingers, and up into the top of the head. Inflating the legs and the arms and the torso. Positive energy. Just basking in that feeling of energetic lightness. Just gently wriggle your toes, wriggle your fingers, just bring yourself back into this pose of Shavasana. And then draw your knees in towards your chest, pull your knees into the chest, and just have a little rock from side to side, from top to bottom, just a gentle massage on the spine. 
and then roll over onto your right side just stay down for a breath or two and then straighten out the top leg come back up into a seated position just a final cross legs in the chest, elevating the heart area upwards, take a deep inhalation and then turn to the right side, draw in your abdomen across your ribs and your shoulders, just observing your body's response to the turn. And come back to the centre, hold onto your knees, lift up into the chest. And then turn to the left. And then come back to the centre. So hold onto your knees, onto your, bring your hands into Namaste, release your knees, hold, bring your hands into Namaste. Lengthen the spine up from the hips into the chest. Draw your breath down into the abdomen, closing your eyes if you haven't done already. Just observing the energy you have created through your practice. A good, positive, healthy flow of clean energy that the extensions and the forward bends and the twists and the inversions and reclining poses bring to the body and to the mind. And then draw your chin down to meet your chest. Spend a moment to acknowledge the positive energy you've created inside. And then send some of that positive energy out into the world. Gently release the backs of your hands down toward your knees, palms facing upwards. Just connecting the tip of the thumb with the index finger. Just a gesture of wisdom, intelligence and peacefulness that we can bring into our day. As you raise your head, allow your eyes to softly open and the focus to softly come back. Thank you very much. Thank you. So hopefully you feel as though you've really lightly brought fairly intense energy into the body and the mind. So thank you very much for joining us.